What's going on YouTube? I want to thank you for stopping by Clever's Multiverse. My name is Clever and this channel is dedicated to everything that I love. Comics, figures, movies, and games. If you're like me and you're into the same things that I'm into, then you're in the right place. And for my first video, I want to talk about the five things I wish I would have knew before I started collecting. Let's go. beginning everything's going to be smooth everything you see you're going to want everything you see you're going to need as time passes on things are going to get different it's going to get a little congested and you're going to start thinking about you know how am i going to make this all work so one thing i want you to keep in mind is what kind of posing are you going to do what are you thinking of in your brain when you buy these figures well, we have two different ways that i've seen people do it for the most part museum poses Right. So I usually see a lot of people do museum poses when they're trying to cram a lot of figures into a small space. Either that or they have so many figures, they're out of space. So that's where the museum poses come into play. To be honest with you, I'm not really that big on the museum poses. That's not what I've seen before. And that's not what I'm trying to recreate. But you can get a lot more figures spaced out if you put them behind each other. And I can see how it can make sense, especially if you're trying to army build. That's pretty cool if you have that going on. But for the most part, if you're just stacking people behind each other and everybody's looking at you like they're coming at you, that's not really my thing. Me, myself, I'm more into the dynamic posing, right? I'm into the posing where they're actually fighting, where it looks like whatever was happening in the room, you know, God pressed pause and everybody stood still for a minute, right? But then you unpause it and they'll go back to what they was doing and everybody's gonna wind up somewhere different. That's the kind of theme I'm going for. And that's what I'm trying to recreate. You know, that's more what I'm into, right? So the dynamic posing is going to take a lot more space than a museum pose is going to take. It's just a fact. Once your collection starts to get hundreds and hundreds of figures, it's going to be a problem. And you're going to have to figure out like, yo, where am I going to put these guys at? And you don't want it to look cluttered. You don't want it to look like there's no space. You want it to look like they have the freedom, like this is really happening. You need to think about your space. You need to think about your storage because that's going to bring us on to our next part, boxes. Let's talk about it. The problem kicks in when you start reaching those 100 marks, when you have 300 figures, when you have 400 figures, 500 figures, 600 figures. That means you have four, five, 600 boxes. Where are you putting these boxes at? Do I have the space to manage a collection the size that I want? You don't want to get caught out there and not have enough space. You don't. money it is what it is collecting screams disposable income you're basically taking your money putting it on the wall and then you forget about it it never happened okay price points when i first started this it was about 2017 2018 i didn't even realize i was collecting it just started off with one figure and it's snowball that we can get into that another day things were a lot different back then than they are today. Pre-COVID and post-COVID, big, big difference. Toys R Us was open. That's a game changer. So we can go in there and we can have our pick of the litter and they would have a whole bunch of things on stock. Walmart was always stocked. Target was always stocked. GameStop had a full section of figures. They even had more in clearance. It's like you just go in and it was just falling off the shelves. I don't like to order online. Back then, even less, I want to go in the store, same time. Here's the money, give me the figure, I'm out of here. That was my thing. And back then, we could really do that. You know, we can go into Walmart and there will be 50 figures, 40 in Target. You know, the new exclusive will come out and there'll be 10 of them right there on the shelf. That's not the case no more, you know. But back to the price points. So Walmart was letting them go for like, I want to say, 1884. Target was letting them go, and I'm talking about Marvel Legends, for $19.99. GameStop was the most expensive, and it was like at $22.99. This is 2017, 2018. Walmart has moved up to $24.95. Target, $24.99. GameStop, surprisingly, is holding firm at $24.99. Now, this is per figure, so let's do the math. So when I first started, for $100, I can get five figures and still get change back, probably. Now we're talking about... A hundred and five hundred and ten dollars for four figures. I'm not sure that I would have started in 2023 
had I not started back then. We have to add on the fact that they're selling figures today that didn't sell back then. Now they'll sell builder figures or deluxe figures all by themselves. Mojo right now, I think it's going between like 55 and 60 bucks. The Blob is going for 60 bucks, between 50 and 60. That's for one figure, $60, $50 for one figure. And he's just slightly bigger than the rest. He might have a little girth, or he might be a little fatter. But the point is, we would have got that guy for free back in 2017. The Blob would have came in a wave. Now they know, yo, I could just sell the Blob for 60 bucks. Not even gonna get into Haslabs right now. I, could, I think I can save that for a whole nother video. But Haslabs is a whole nother beast. Now, now we're talking about several hundred dollars. Now we're talking about waiting in line. It's almost like Haslabs are like the hot toys of Hasbro. Now, is this something that you can see yourself getting into? Because this is what it will snowball into. It's not all about that Flash figure, that Superman. If you buy that Superman, you're going to want to buy that Wonder Woman. You're going to want to buy the Joker. You're going to want to buy that Green Lantern. And it's not going to stop. I'm telling you, my brother, this is addictive. The cherry on top to all of this is that these stores are vacant. Post-COVID, these stores are vacant. We find the peg warmers. We have one or two every now and then. You're lucky if you walk in and you find something you want. You're lucky if you find one. We used to buy three or four at a time. Now things have really changed. The figures are just not dropping the way they used to. You have to be extremely vigilant. You have to keep searching the same stores over and over and wasting your gas and driving around and trying to see if you're the first one there just so you can get the only figure that they release for the whole store. That's going to lead you to have to start ordering online. You're going to have to start hitting uh, Walmart.com. You're going to have to start hitting Target, Big Bad Toy Store. You're going to have to start hitting all of these stores, which means shipping costs and wait times. So you're going to have to buy two or three at a time to make it worthwhile. I'm not saying that everybody does it, but I have collective insurance on everything that I own. I put way too much money into everything that I have to not protect it you know that's a monthly fee it's not that much but when you start adding up in the grand scheme of things it's all gonna start getting crazy real quick once you start hitting the calculator shipping costs new figures old figures has labs collector's insurance maintenance and cleaning the bigger your collection becomes the more burdensome it's gonna become dust is gonna be a major issue wiping down figures it's going to be extremely time consuming. Arranging, rearranging your figures is all going to come into play. Now, these things take time. That's what you have coming to you when you have figures like this. You put money into it. You put money into the room. Domino effects. All it takes is one misplaced figure to mess up your whole life. One strong draft from an open window. He can fall down and take 30, 40. 50 figures with them. When you got to do 50 at a time, 40 at a time, you're not going to like that. I have to break this room into sections. There's no way I'm going to sit here one day. And I know you can't see the full dynamic of it. This is just what you see at eye level because I'm sitting down. But all my figures go up to the ceiling. I have them hanging off the ceiling and all type of stuff. There's no way I could do this whole room in one day. Even if I had the day off, it's just like my body won't allow me to do it. It might take me the whole week to get across the whole room. That gets very monotonous. That gets like, yo, my God, after like five, you're like, yo, I'm off this, man. Like, I'm telling you, like that part right there is the worst part. Online buying, selling, and trading. So this is a big one, guys. Like, I just want to be very clear with this. This, <laughs> this could be the savage land sometimes. One of the things that I strongly recommend is for you to join a Facebook group. Join a Facebook collector group with people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. People who are interested in figures. People who are interested in comics. The best way for me to reach out to people is to go on a Facebook group and to, you know, get with people who have the same passions that I do. Just like anything else, you're going to have your bad apples. 
You're going to have your scammers. You're going to have people trying to rob you. I don't think there's any industry that's exempt from that. When you first join a group, you're not really going to have any friends. You're not going to know anybody. You haven't done business with anybody. My number one and probably my strongest piece of advice is never do an unprotected transaction. You never send cash. You never mail somebody a check. You never give anybody your credit card information. You only pay through PayPal. PayPal, goods and services, GNS all day. It's worth the two or three dollars. The people that you're gonna be doing business with, you have to remember, they're not gonna be from your block. You're not gonna catch them at the corner store. You're never gonna see these people again. How do you know that Billy from Nebraska who wants your Spider-Man is not gonna rob you? I would go through PayPal, goods and services. That's the best way to go about it because at the end of the day, unless you've done business with these people before, PayPal, goods and services is your best friend. If somebody says, let's not do GNS, they're trying to rob you, fam. Stop it. References are going to be a key factor. A reference is basically somebody who's done business with you before who can testify to how seamless it went. That's basically like going on eBay and seeing that the guy got a 99% seller rating. I'm good to go. Now, if you start asking about me, and then they say, oh, nah, that guy jerked me, or he took my figure, or whatever, and they start sending you screenshots. Yeah, that's a problem. You're welcome. Your time investment. What does that mean? So your time investment is basically going to be the time that you're going to put into not getting anything, just learning about them. How do you know the figures you should be getting? How do you know if a figure's been released several times or figures never been released at all. This is gonna take some education on your part. Are you trying to build the X-Men? Are you trying to build the X-Factor? Has every single figure been released? Could you go out right now and buy everybody if money wasn't an issue? This is gonna suck up a lot of your time. Toy hunting. I'm pretty sure you've all watched the toy hunting videos where people go to Walmart or they go to Target or they go to GameStop and they're like, oh, this is what I'm finding here. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Like, you know, by the time you go to three Walmarts and you go to three Targets and you go to five GameStops and your local comic store, your day is shot. That's it. That was the whole day, fam. Like, they don't put Walmarts down the block from each other. You don't wasted your whole day looking for things and you're probably going to come home disappointed. Nope, 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 whack, whack, nope, nope, don't want it, had it, don't want it, nope. That's really where I'm at now. You're going to come across people who don't want to sell online. They don't want to send things in the mail. They're going to say, pick up only. Meet me at my local gas station. So what happens if the guy's 90 minutes away, two hours away? One way. Is this something that you're interested in doing? Because even though you don't want to do it today, it's going to happen. I guarantee you somebody's going to come across something that you want that is going to be old, nobody else has it, and you're going to say, geez, how many miles are you willing to drive that far? Because I'm going to be honest with you, everything is not going to hit your store. Everything is not going to come to your Walmart. Everything is not going to come to your local Target or your local Walgreens. It's just not going to happen. It's usually the same stuff over and over and over. But these are things that I wish somebody would have told me. Because if you think about it, you think, oh, I just go to Walmart. And every Friday, I just go buy figures. And uh, by this time next year, I have a crazy collection. And nobody's going to be able to top me. That's just not the truth. The way the game is set up right now is like one person can win a month. If you go there with a couple hundred dollars, you can buy the whole wave and it's over. You know, these are things you need to think about. And these are things that I never had no idea that existed until I was in the game. As you start growing with collecting, you're going to realize very fast that this is like designed to keep you wanting more. It's designed to keep you in debt. It's designed, to, you know, to make sure that you understand that you're never... 100%. My brother asked me sometimes, so who you need now? I was like, who I don't need? Like, people look at my collection and they see who I have. I look at my collection and I see who I'm missing, but I'm never going to be happy. You're a completionist and you think that you're going to finish this and you think that, oh my God, you know, uh, Monday when this new figure comes out, I'll finally be finished. You're lying to yourself. I'll be 100% honest. You are lying to yourself. It's not going to happen. This is a never-ending battle. You are going to be chasing this as long as you're collecting. 
I'm just putting it out there for people who may not know or people who are just trying to get into this. Hey, so there you have it. Those are the top five things I wish I would have knew before I started figure collecting. Hopefully, I was able to shed light on some topics that maybe you weren't thinking about. Maybe you're about to start collecting and this maybe put you in a position where you're like, oh, wow, I wasn't thinking about that. You know, and that's what I want to do this video for. And that's what I want to bring to the table is the reality of the situation. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do me a favor. Comment in the video below. Help me to shape this channel and show me the topics that you're interested in. This is for all of us. Peace.